Hello and welcome to Sound of the Day with me, Mark Anson. Audio is episode number three. Today what we're going to do is take a kind of standard hip-hop beat and produce some rather creative effects to change the flavour. So let's listen to the original unaffected beat, first of all. So this beat uh, is part of a sound generator in Reactor called Massive. This is called the preset is free bass. It's just, I think it's the first one that comes up. And it's quite a kind of cool hip hop kind of beat with a bit of Rhodes piano, kind of cool drum beat uh, and some bass going on too. And what I did is applied a bunch of effects to it to kind of change the flavour. So let's kind of hear what we ended up with and then I'll take you through the step by step of how we got there. <laughs> Okay, and we'll just listen to it where, uh, without those effects again. So you can you can hear that um, we've really kind of grunged the whole thing up and made it sound quite dirty. Uh, cool. So the first thing that I did um, was that I added in a, an effects chain uh, which has the sci-fi plugin and a phaser uh, one after the other on the same bus channel. So you can see I've got um, the bus here. Uh, the ring bus is going out to this channel here. Um, basically, the what I've got here is a resonator setup, and with an LFO on it, and the LFO is set to 100%, which is obviously a lot. So let's hear how that changes from the original beat. So what that does is it just gives the whole thing a bit of wobble and a bit of movement, especially when I've got a phaser set up here, where it's on a very, very slow um, cycle through the phaser. Um, so I think it's currently set to, so I'll look, uh, two whole bars it takes to do an entire cycle of the phaser. So it gives the, the whole thing this very slow kind of progressive sense of movement, while the, the LFO up here is doing a very quick wobble. So if you kind of pay attention to the, the wobble, um, especially on the Rhodes piano where it's most prevalent. What you could potentially do with something like that is um, automate your mod amount to emphasize specific notes. So again, we'll choose the, the Rhodes piano there. Something like that would just kind of keep the whole thing moving, give that a bit of flavor. Okay, the next thing that I did was a, a fairly experimental technique. I just wanted to see what would happen. I created a second uh, bus out here um, called Pitch. What it's doing is it's going to the Pod Farm elements, which is a guitar, uh, guitar effects uh, plugin suite, and I've got essentially a guitar octaver, kind of like uh, Matt Bellamy, Tom Morello sort of octaver kind of effect. And basically, what it's doing is it's adding a kind of low end oomph to the, the entire track. So I'll mute it first, and then we can we'll bring it in. So it's, it's quite subtle, but it's basically just giving the, the kick drum especially just that little bit of uh, extra energy to it. Uh, what I did next was take my three channels here, so it's my main channel and my two uh, buses, and basically I put them all into one large bus mix and then applied two effects to them. I applied the Native Instruments driver and then the Nomad Factory um, magnetic too. And what I want to do with these is kind of really add a lot of dirt, a lot of grit to the whole thing. Um, so we'll start with the, the driver here. So you can hear we're, we're totally changing the sound there. Um, so what I've done is, the first thing I did here was set my frequency to about 10 kilohertz. So basically what it's doing is it's sort of filtering out most of the high end above 10 kilohertz. So that instantly, once we start filtering at high frequencies, things tend to sound a bit older and a bit more kind of vintage because previous audio recording formats um, didn't quite have the fidelity that we have these days. So by removing higher frequencies, we kind of create this old, old school kind of sound. Uh, the next thing that I did was I applied just a little bit of distortion. So I'll crank that up a little bit so you can hear how far you can push it if you, if you like, but I preferred it to be a small amount rather than lots. So 
So you can hear there that you have to be quite careful with this uh, this driver plugin because it wants to kill your audio if you if you well maybe that's what you're looking for. In my case, I want a fairly kind of subtle distortion there. Uh, next final part of the chain is my one of my favorite plugins, the Nomad Factory Magnetic Two. Uh, and what I've got here is I've got the real speed set to 15. Again, this is to kind of match old kind of 15 IPS uh, tape machines. Um, so a different kind of flavor from modern stuff. Uh, I've also got um, a lot of tape saturation, a lot of uh, kind of vintage tape color flavor put in. I've pulled out a little bit the low end and kind of cranked sort of the, what's called the brilliance control on this, uh, which kind of adds a bit of kind of high end flavor. So let's have a listen. <laughs> Even though the Nomad Factory is listed in Pro Tools as an EQ, you'll see it down here, the EQ section, it actually has a, a kind of kind of limiter sort of compressor up here. Uh, there's not really much fin uh, finesse to it, it's kind of just really on or off, um, but I like to play around with it and kind of just, it kind of gels everything together sometimes in a fairly, uh, kind of almost fairly unnatural way, um, like a kind of over compressed kind of sound where you get the, the kind of suction effect almost. Uh, I, I kind of like that for, for this this vibe that I'm going for. So it's uh, have a listen to the sort of with absolutely no processing and then add in all the processing. <laughs> Cool. So I hope you enjoyed episode number three of Sound of the Date. My name is Mark Antonio. Adios.